All right, everybody. So what we're going to be doing now is just some housekeeping stuff as far as cleaning up a little bit of um, our materials, adding some reflections to things. And um, also I wanted to get rid of our funky hands that we can see in our scene here. So let's do that first. Um, so in the content drawer, uh, we have our content first person our blueprints, which are basically telling us how to operate the, um, the game or the walkthrough. Uh, we have a rifle right here, which is referenced by the first person game mode. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is actually go into our first person game mode. And this will have all of the um, setups that we want to have uh, turned on and off. So I want to first turn off my HUD. So we're not using any HUD class. And then I'm gonna leave everything else the same for now. And then I'm gonna come back to my first person character. And I'm gonna to go to the viewport. Don't worry about any of that stuff. And I see my arms here. And I'm gonna hit delete. Click on them and delete them. Compile. Everything looks good. And then close. And if you're not getting everything looks good here, then you just skip that part that I uh, did with the HUD. So now when I hit play, I have no arms. I also deleted the gun out of the scene just by clicking it and deleting it. Um, but if I hit play now, I have no arms. I also can't shoot. So it's more first person. All right, so now that we got rid of that, let's go ahead and make some of our materials look better. So I'm going to start by um, doing some basic things like um, our beautifully baked floor that we've got here. I'm going to go ahead and go into that material instance right here, double click on it. And that brings us into a somewhat familiar space. Um, and I'm going to actually just go ahead and make the floor glossy. And the way we do that is simply by pulling off of the roughness, and there's no slider there, but if we input something called a constant, it has a intrinsic slider basically. So uh, at zero, that is like the slider being all the way to the left on Blender, so it's gonna be super glossy. We can increase the roughness by bumping it up and every 0.25 is 25%, 0.50, 50%, one being the maximum of roughness. So I'm gonna leave it at 0.25 right now and I'm gonna apply it. The glossier surfaces are, the more expensive it is on your um, graphics card or computer in general. So uh, you wanna get it glossy enough, but if your computer isn't capable of handling it, don't overdo the gloss. So I'm gonna just do 0.1. Okay, and so now you can start to see the reflections of the outside inside on the floor. So that's beautiful. Okay, some other stuff that I've got. Um, I've got these epoxy sculptures, which are transparent, and they didn't import with any of those parameters, so I need to double click on this and play with uh, turning this material transparent. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to click outside of it, so I've got the parameters for the entire material, and instead of opaque here, I'm going to do, which one am I going to do? Mm, translucent. Okay. So translucent now changes a lot of my options that I have here. And I'm going to come out here with the opacity and I'm going to set another constant. And I'm going to move it to point 0.1, point 0.2, and let's do refraction constant. Let's see what happens. Apply this now. Okay, so 
I can see it's too translucent and too much like refraction and stuff going on. So let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Bump up the opacity, we'll do 0.5, apply. Mm, 0.8, apply. Okay. And I'll bump this to 0.5. Right click here, I'm gonna break this link. Apply. Okay, so that's kind of playing with the transparency and I'll do the same thing with this one. Actually, I'll probably just duplicate this after I'm done playing with it a little bit more because um, this one, this one, and this one are all epoxy, so they'll be translucent. The rest of the materials are pretty good in here. Um, so I am going to maybe just make a couple of materials in my non-room just to play around and show you some rotating materials and stuff like that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Come out here. Okay, and so inside this room, I've got this large surface that I can apply materials to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's go back over to our Vorgal here, and I'm going to go into... Actually, I'll do it in here first since it's easier. So um, I'm going to find a file for something that I used in a previous iteration. Um, so let's do... Okay, so I found this texture um, that I made a while ago, and it is kind of like this blue and, and reddish thing just sitting there. But what I'm going to do is I actually want to make a material out of that by right-clicking on it. And so now this is a material that I can apply to this object. All right. And then I can do a couple of other things to it. So if I wanted to, I could uh, tile it a bunch. So what we'll do is we'll pull off of here and use text your coordinate. and then click on this and I can do 20, 20 and have it tile it. So that's good for tiling. Um, what if I wanna make it glow? Maybe I'll bump that into emissive. But what if I wanna control how much I wanna let it glow? I can pull off of here and do multiply or actually, I'm sorry, I do it right here. Right click, mole, to apply. And I can plug this into here. And I can plug this into here. And then I can pull this out and pull up a constant. And I can bump it up to whatever I want. Slide it up. Okay, so that gives me the ability to multiply the brightness of things or anything you want. So the multiplier has two factors. You plug in the texture sample or whatever other node to the A, and then to the B you can plug in a constant, and then you can multiply things. So if you wanted to make your roughness, make it super shiny, um, you can play with that as well. And the last thing I want to do is maybe add a rotator. So I can right click in here and type up rotator. Okay. And so if I plug this into the UV here, I can plug this into my coordinate. And then I can have this object rotate. And over here, you can see if I click on the rotator, I get the parameters for the rotator. I can 
jack up the speed quite a bit, which will give anybody a seizure if it's applied to this material. Let's see what happens. Am I gonna crash my, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that, so that's, uh, that's quite intense. Um, so let's go ahead and maximize this so I can stop it. And I can change the direction. I'm going to slow it way down, though. Oh, and I forgot, you also don't need this. Let me break that link. Yeah. So this is like a just a thing to make something glowing and rotate. So if I save it and close it, this is what my room looks like. But I'm not going to use that as a material. So let me just turn that off. 